Non-essential travel Janice. is banned in the UK for a month and it might extend longer. A body blow for everybody. What is it going to mean for capacity and margins at Ryanair in the next quarter, Michael? Near term, what are the impacts? Near term, man, so we've reduced our winter schedule to uh, just 40% of prior year. We are kind of guiding for about 38 million passengers uh, for the full year up to the end of March. We think we may have to work that number back slightly. Um, but, you know, we're running pretty much skeleton schedules for the next uh, month or two. Forward bookies into November were already terrible. So uh, we're not sure these lockdowns will have that much effect on it, although the risk would be to the downside. Um, but they're a continuation of, you know, the failed policies of EU governments for the last 12 months. The WHO themselves have said that lockdowns, you know, are a failure. They should be avoided wherever possible. And they're only useful if you use the time of the lockdown to get your health, your testing system in place, your test and tracing system in place to avoid the second lockdown. And here we have the UK government, the Irish government, locking us down again. But if there was a month to be locked down, the month of November would be the best month. Good morning, Michael. How much of your fleet do you see active being in the winter? You're going to have to retire some of these planes, given the fact that capacity is going to be so low. Uh, Anne-Marie, good morning. We won't retire the planes. Uh, we are we have grounded quite a proportion of the fleet. I mean, what's happening at the moment, we're keeping most of the aircraft flying, but they're doing maybe one or two flights a day each. Uh, so it's pretty inefficient. I mean, it's why today we announced a small loss for the half year, just under 200 million, considerably better than any of our other competitors last week who were, who were reporting Q3 losses in the billions. Um, but nevertheless, it is painful. I mean, I think what we're waiting for, though, is, you know, uh, we're still hoping there will be a vaccine announced this side of Christmas. And uh, we're hoping that there will be commercial quantities of that vaccine available in, by the end of Q1, Q2 of 2021. And then I think there'll be a very strong uh, snapback or pent up demand for intra EU air travel. We saw it uh, two weeks ago when the UK added the Canaries to the, their green list. On that one, the very first day, our bookings went from 2,000 bookings to 28,000 bookings just on the routes to and from the Canaries. So there's enormous pent-up demand, and we intend to fill that demand by responding very quickly uh, once a vaccine or the lockdowns are lifted or a vaccine becomes available. Michael, how important? We do, Amory just and I spent some time there with, with he, Siemens Health and Ears. Rapid testing, 15-minute rapid tests. <laughs> Is that not where we should be seeing our governments spend more of their time and money so that we can move around? Is that not ground zero to get us off Absolutely. the ground? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not even sure these 15-minute tests, I'm not sure how, how reliable the 15-minute the antigen test will be. But there's no doubt that governments should have used the first lockdown to massively boost their test and trace capacity. Now, you know, Johnson in the UK promised a world-leading test and tracing, but like all of Johnson's promises, including Brexit, they've been in shambles. But, you know, the UK should be testing 5 million people a week, one tower, 6 million tenth of the population. In Ireland, we're testing 100,000 people a day. We should be testing a million people a, a, a week. And that's the way you chase down the virus. That's the way you get on top of this, not yo-yoing in into lockdown, out of lockdown, into lockdown again. This is political mismanagement on a grand scale. Um, and what's missing is that effective wide scale uh, testing, uh, where you test typically 10% or 20% of the population uh, each week. That's the way to get rid of these lockdowns. Michael, you're optimistic on a vaccine this side of Christmas. I have to say, in terms of the science, that is very, very, very optimistic and hopeful. Also, Michael Gove says this latest lockdown in the UK could be extended past December 2nd if we do not see better data. What does that do for you if this bleeds into December, which is supposed to be a massive travel month given the holidays? Well, firstly, I wouldn't believe anything that Michael Gove says. I mean, his record on Brexit uh, and almost everything else uh, and on COVID has shown that Michael Gove is not to be trusted. I mean, I would much more likely take my lead from someone like Anthony Fauci in the United States. I mean, it does seem there seems to be a reasonable um, consensus that is that a number, possibly two or three uh, vaccines will be licensed this side of Christmas. Now, they won't be commercially available, that I accept. So the challenge then is how much, uh, how much uh, of the, much of those vaccines, how many doses can you have commercially available 
by the end of Q1, Q2 of next year. You know, and you see lots of people pre-producing uh, vaccines. So I would be reasonably hopeful that certainly by the end of the second quarter next year, you have sufficient quantities of an effective vaccine that will take care of the high-risk groups, the elderly, people working in hospital and nursing home settings. And um, we've already seen this year that on the, you know, the way into the summer, there was a fall in case numbers. Uh, but I think it would become increasingly more difficult for governments to lock down their economies. It's not working. The first lockdown didn't work. We're now into a second lockdown in most European economies. We have to learn to live with this virus, and it seems to be the best way to live with it prior to a vaccine is much greater testing. I mean, on a scale that no European governments are talking about, because frankly, it would be cheaper to spend a couple of billion testing six or 10 million people a week in the UK than it is to keep yo-yoing in and out of lockdown. Michael, can we go back to, to the numbers and the guidance again? I, there's a couple of things that I just want to get sure. a, a steer from you on. Um, first of all, liquidity. You say prepare for more losses. The first half loss was $197 million. Um, How much worse is that going to be in the second half? What's a reasonable guide to the market? And then on liquidity, are you drawing down credit lines? Are you going to do anything smart, like easy? Well, I don't know whether it was smart or not. I don't run an airline, uh, which is sale and lease back. Just talk to us about the liquidity and the balance sheet of Ryanair at the moment. Sure, man. Now, liquidity is exceptionally strong. You know, we raised at 1.2 billion there last month, uh, 400 million from shareholders, which was led by management, uh, putting in their own cash. We raised another 850 bond. Now, but so we have about four, uh, about 4.5 billion in cash at the end of the half year. We do have about 1.5 billion of debt repayments next year. The UK government loan has to be repaid in March and a 2014 bond has to be repaid in June. But we're very strongly uh, cash liquid at the moment and we intend to continue to be that way. Uh, it's, uh, I'm afraid it's impossible to give any figures for the remainder of this year or into next year because so much of it depends on, you know, the, the strongest cash flow uh, time of year for the airline is that January through to April period when everybody's making bookings for Easter for their summer holidays. And how much of that we'll see in the first quarter of next year? Honestly, at this stage, we don't know. I think if there's a vaccine available this side of Christmas and it looks like some kind of commercial quantities, then I think the cash flow will be very strong and we will be in good shape. If a vaccine is delayed or it looks like there could be a third lockdown, or, then clearly the cash position will become more difficult. What we have tried to avoid doing all of this is, you know, doing sales and leasebacks at a time of distressed pricing and High, or highly, our higher interest rates due to commercial uncertainty is not the way forward. Uh, we notice a number of our competitors have done sale and leasebacks, but all that means is they will have much higher aircraft costs going forward. Their cost base will rise into the future, whereas in Ryanair, particularly as we're uh, taking delivery of these new and much cheaper Boeing aircraft, our cost base will be falling. Uh, the cost gap between Ryanair and every other airline will widen. Michael, there's a reason why you've been there a long time, because you take the odd punt and a bit of a risk. Over 9-11, you took a huge punt and a I huge risk. A long time you doubled you down. Well, I suppose I could say the same about myself, Michael. I've been talking to you for the same length of time. <laughs> Amri's just getting started, and she's looking forward to it. She's looking forward to it another couple of years with you. But on a more serious note, Michael, you, you, you strike yeah. me... Uh, this morning with slightly more positive rhetoric. You're going to get through the eye of the storm. What's the double down trade for O'Leary in 2021? What is, what is your big opportunity in this crisis, if there is one at all? Uh, I think the opportunity here is to reprice the aircraft order for the next five or six years. We're in advanced discussions with Boeing on... Uh, orders on order pricing on compensation none of those can be concluded until the, ban the boeing max goes back into service and there's been an enormous opportunity which i think we have worked assiduously at in the last three months man which has been to re refine the cost base in almost every area of Ryanair. going forward as we recover from covid 19 we will have lower more productive labor costs lower airport costs bigger growth incentives going forward, we'll be able to pass on all those savings to our customers in the form of lower airfares. And I have no doubt in my mind that customers all over Europe, the first thing they will want to do as the lockdowns end and the virus is discovered is go travel again across Europe. Short haul, I think, in Europe will rebound very strongly. And I believe you'll see Ryanair make enormous market share gains in that recovery.